Hi, my name is Dr. Jude Jepu. Today I'm going to be uh, teaching you how to use uh, OASIS montage to uh, perform depth esti estimation using spectral analysis on aeromagnetic data. Now, depth estimation using, aero, uh, using spectral analysis on aeromagnetic data is principally classified into two. We have estimation to the top of magnetic sources and depth estimation to the bottom of magnetic sources. Now, the difference is that the depth estimation to the top of magnetic sources is used to map top of the crystalline basement. Since it's mapping top of crystalline basement, it is applied to estimate sedimentary thicknesses. It's also uh, used to um, map magnetic minerals, intra-basement faults and fractures, and also the lateral variation in basement susceptibility. So those are some of the applications of estimation of depth to the top of magnetic sources. Now, the other category is depth estimation to the bottom of magnetic sources. This is also known as Curie point isotherm uh, depth estimation. Now, this is principally used to establish the thermal behavior of a region and it's essentially many times applied in geothermal exploration. Uh, this is used to uh, know the heat flow of the area and now see how it can be applied for geothermal exploration. So these are essentially the two broad categories of um, depth estimation using spectral analysis. There are other depth estimation methods that we're not going to talk about. There is SPI, Peters half slope method, and several uh, 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 analytic signals, EULA solutions, WENA uh, solutions, and the convolutions and all that. But today we are principally uh, using spectral analysis to do depth estimation. Now, it is important for, for, for successful analysis, the window size selection is very, very important. Uh, you can read up on that, uh, on, the, on, on the basic things that you need to consider before selecting an appropriate window size. If you need that particular text, you can email me and I will send it to you. And it's important that you select appropriate window locations. This is recommended. In fact, it is important that these windows that you are going to be selecting should be overlapping and you select an appropriate wave number range. All these things are contained in this text. Anyway, before you actually want to perform this particular analysis, you should have known the caveats that you must uh, uh, satisfy before doing this analysis. Also, you need a priori information of the area in which you want to uh, research on because it's important you have an idea so that the solutions that you're going to be getting, you can now uh, kind of check quickly if it's uh, making sense to you or not. And um, I want to show you how to actually um, uh, create your windows. For this, it's a one degree by one degree. So I chose a window size of 30 minutes by 30 minutes, eight blocks, which are overlapping. I created these blocks using ArcGIS. Of course, it's easy to create. You can just create a shape file uh, using that. And so I, I, this is just a visual representation of what is happening. But we are going to be using OASIS Montage to create a polygon file, which we are going to use to window uh, the data that we already have. For example, if I check on uh, block seven, block one, you see that block seven and block one is overlapping. So also applies to block three. If I put up this, you see how these ones are overlapping and that's how it goes to every other one that we are doing here. So you see some overlap in some of these blocks and that is essential so that you now detect all the sources that are available in the area. So this is an example of how to create an overlapping block. I'm not saying that you must create it this way, but ensure that the blocks that you are using, the window sizes that you are using, and the blocks you are creating are overlapping essentially. So also, so we are going to go here. This performing this uh, radially average power spectrum calculation needs that these uh, blocks are going to be windowed from the main data 
that you have. How do we do that? It's easy. You go to database, do window data, you create a geographic uh, polygon file, also known as PLY file. So what is the name that we're going to give it? We're going to say it's block one. Meanwhile, if we go to this place where I created my block one, and um, let's see block one. Okay, let's look at the properties of block one. We see that uh, for the latitudes, we have highest is um, the maximum latitude is 9.0, and the maximum, no, no, sorry, the minimum is 9.0, while the maximum is 9.5, and the minimum of the longitude is 6 and 6.5. So these are the coordinates that we're going to use to create our polygon file here to window our data. So here, minimum longitude we set it 6.0 maximum longitude is 6.5 minimum latitude is 9.0 maximum latitude is 9.5 so you use these coordinates to create each of these blocks so you create a polygon file for each of these so that you use it to window the data so you click on next and um, what happens is it's going to tell you which coordinate system is geographic. You remember, 6.5 is geographic. So we you check the geographic and click Next. So the next thing we're going to do now is to window this uh, grid using this particular uh, polygon. It's a section of the grid. So we're using uh, this. So the next thing we are going to do, we are going to go to grid and utilities, window a grid using a polygon file. So which is the grid file that we want to use? We want to use this data. And what is the name of the output? So we name it block one. Block one should be the name. Polygon coordinates file, you browse for it. We have created it earlier. And um, here we go. It is here. And this does it. So the mask area, we need it to be outside. Do we need to minimize size of output grid? Yes. Great. Yes. And click on OK. So this creates our a, 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 a window. This is a block one window. And uh, if we look at this place here, tile vertically, we can see that um, how they kind of appear here. So that is essentially what we have done. So this is a portion. If you look at this place, this is actually this particular portion here. So we'll go ahead and continue. So what we're going to do next is to do this step-by-step -step filtering because we're going to be performing a full rate transformation on this block one grid that we have here. So first of all, you have to prepare the grid. And uh, the grid that we're interested in is the block one grid name of the output. Let's say name it pre block one. And um, let's leave every other thing as the default state and click on OK. So this will create um, uh, the we prepare this particular grid for the Fourier transformation. Sometimes it may take some time. So while it is um, performing this particular function, uh, okay, it has been created. So the next thing that we're going to do will be to go to this step-by-step uh, -step filtering and perform uh, full rate transformation on this prepared grid. So this is a uh, full rate transformation. It's been done. So we go again to this uh, mag map step by step filtering, and we are not using this one because we have already prepared uh, the uh, we have already performed Fourier transformation on the grid. So the next thing we are going to do is to do the spectrum calculation and display. So what we are doing is the radial average spectrum. So from here automatically it's giving you the this thing the the name of uh, the input transform file that we performed earlier. So what is the output of the spectrum file? Let's call it block one, two, in order for us to be able to identify it. So that has been done. So we'll go here again and we'll display the spectrum. 
the spectrum we, are, we want to display is this, this SPC. We'll go ahead and display it. So this is it. This is the spectrum. This is the radially average power spectrum. And this is the depth estimate. So remember, we used an SPC file. It's from this file that we are going to use to plot the, the slope of this uh, spectrum in order to give us our estimated depth. To do that, we are going to be using a MATLAB program. So in the next video, we are going to be plotting the slope to estimate the depth of these uh, magnetic sources. Thank you very much.